Hey, hello and welcome back to this Blender 3.0 series that I've got going on here. Um, I have made a few videos recently that cover random topics inside Blender. Uh, this one here is going to be probably the most accessible topic to cover, which is just sort of your advanced uh, measurements and um, keeping things accurate as for different jobs and all sorts of stuff. Um, but my previous videos do cover more niche things that are really going to help with your understanding of the software, in my opinion. I and mean, it's not really stuff that you are going to be able to find very easily just by knowing it from elsewhere, because you don't just come across this stuff and you don't know what you're going to have to Google to find that stuff. So I would suggest checking out some of those other videos in case you find something useful. But we're going to crack on with this video, and as you can see, I've already got the measuring tool selected. Um, that's because, I mean, that's the logical place to go when you're modeling accurately. But I personally do not use it. Um, I you know, I don't think I know anyone that does use it very often. I mean, I work in games and I've got freedom to change the scales wherever possible, um, as well as just to kind of make things look right rather than actually physically be correct. Um, so I've got a lot more freedom, but if you're a, a 3D modeler that's working for, you know, something a little bit more like architecture or uh, 3D printing, then you're really going to need size accurate representation of things. And that's where this tool can be useful. But again, there are other methods that we'll mention in a moment. Um, and as far as this tool does go, actually just hovering over it is going to tell you everything you need to know. Um, and that's actually just how I learn most things, by just hovering over them. Um, but we're going to go over it anyway real quick. Um, just as every tool in Blender, control is going to be a snapping uh, for, for the position. So when I drag this out, I can snap the end of it. And I can grab this and snap the other end. And I can snap that and it's measured that two meter edge. Um, the most interesting thing on here was actually that if I hold shift, uh, if I create it and hold shift, it's actually going to measure the um, the surface thickness. I thought that was really cool. Um, so if I just hold shift, it's going to do that. And then if I press X on the one that's selected, I can, sl I can delete them. As well as if I do hold control and I measure edge to edge here, um, I can then connect this by clicking in the middle of it to turn it into an angle where I can then find out that that is 45 degrees between those. Kind of useful, but not really something that I use very often. Uh, you might really need that a lot, but once I click off this, I can't see it. So if I tap into edit mode here, then I can actually see that information just by pressing um, onto my drop down menu here, which is my viewport overlays. I can actually just press edge length and I can see any selected edge and its length. Now where that's not very useful is when the edges are split up, you know. So if I've got an edge that's split up, then it's going to come up as two one meter edges and not one two meter edge, which might be the information that I need to see. It's never bothered me that much personally, but that's why the measuring tool is useful. Um, and it gets around issues like that. And then as far as finding the angle goes, we can see in the viewport overlay, if I turn off edge length, we can see edge angle. It says 90 degrees for actually how it's facing um, in its orientation. So if I get that one that's quite visible and I rotate that, then it's actually, you know, changing some of these angles around here. Um, and again, it, it's not picking that with much um, thought, you know, it, it has to display what it is. Whereas if I use the measuring tool, I can definitely get that 45 degree angle. Um, and that's the one that I want rather than picking at these random angles, um, you know, which, it, which might not make much sense, but you're gonna have to go for face angles as well in this viewport display. So if I go to face angle, then we can start to see um, some of those corner degrees as well. So 
we've got and then we've got face area which again is going to be really useful for any any like I don't use this myself but anything where you're going to really need to be concerned about the amount of material used and all, all this math that you're going to need to input and that's going to be really useful to know. Um, keeping with the uh, the overlay settings there before we get into the more advanced um, ways of just making sure everything's even. If we look at just these displays, we have, we've got the mesh analysis um, tab there as well. And by default, that's on overhang. And I think this is pretty much for 3D printing. Um, if I start to scale this and move it down, then once we get to a certain point there, if I just start scaling it, so it's easier to see once the overhang becomes too much it's going to start displaying as like an oh no this is maybe getting a bit far and then when i bring that all the way down it's like okay well that's you know it's getting worse and worse until finally that it's it displays red to say that this is a hundred percent an overhang um so if i just had a standard example of just having that that's an overhang and then maybe just oops and then just uh, you know move it up. We can see those overhangs, and that might be useful to identify. As well as there's a whole drop down menu there. Thickness. Again, definitely for three D printing. If it's too thin, you're gonna have issues. So that's when that becomes. Uh, you know, it, it displays some widths there, which we've got some settings down here as well. Again, not something that I use, but something that you should be aware of. Intersect, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I've not tested all of these, but yep, yeah, they just work how you imagine they would. Um, it's really not too bad. I just, once we know it exists, we can. We can start thinking about how they work. So distortion works on distortion. And the final one uh, is just sharp. So if I grab that edge out, then we're going to see how sharp that edge is, right? So that's pretty much how they work. And I've covered that just as quickly as possible because it's um, that's just that's just what it is. Um, what we're more interested in potentially is if I just scale this on the y-axis and I scale it on the x as well then we've also got um, we'll go back to edge length and it's still displaying as two meters so what we've got here is Two meters and two meters and it's clearly not two meters um, and one of my previous videos goes over this in more detail but what we can just do is press ctrl a and apply the scale and now it's showing an accurate length um, although i don't quite like that it's showing 11.1 .1, maybe i want it to be exactly 11. so i'm going to start dragging this on the x-axis um, and it's going to display you know 11 but it's quite a range there um, so, you know, we're going to want to just use shift on the x-axis to, to be able to bring that exactly to 11 without going over it. Um, and shift is going to move really, really accurately. So I can just stop on 11 nice and easy. And then on this other edge, you know, do I really want that to be... What it is um maybe i want to get it exactly on something so i'm going to use shift to really accurately move that to the right value um, and that's how that works that's how shift can get you some accurate values but then what if we've got situations here where i'm uh where i'm adding subdivisions and 
uh, and then we've got one edge here that is out here another one that's like you know middle of nowhere and we want to try and get it back to the right length uh, so that they're all even well that's where if I go to edit preferences and type in loop tools sorry loop tools there it is then we can look at that and we can see where it is it's in the edit tab slash context menu so our context menu is with W and there we go we've got loop tools um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press W and then I'm going to use space which means it's going to be spaced out evenly so now I can see 1.57 is spread across all of them annoyingly uh, you would think you have to start per one but if you do it if you go to select loops and edge rings in this case then we can space them all at once and then it's nice and even again um, so that's how that works and it's just a good way to get things um, spaced out and then if I were to bevel these you know and I want specifically to bevel them by a certain number well I don't have to hold shift to bevel these by point you know, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna add an extra loop in the middle so we can see what's going on. But in this case, if I hold Shift, I can see that I'm trying to bring it up to, say, let's say 0 0.3, and it's actually quite difficult. But I did hit it there, and there we go. They're all 0 0.3, but that's a little bit annoying. So what actually I'm gonna do is just press point full stop in the um, in the tab here in while on the bevel tool. And I'm going to put point 0.3 in there. I've put so I've put point 0.3 with actually on the keyboard, and now it's locked to being point 0.3. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, lock that in with left click, and now they're all point 0.3 width. You know, if I then say didn't have this one done, but I did all the others, then I can quickly just bevel and then type in point 0.3, and I know that it's the same as all the others. You know, so I'm not. Like actually typing things in makes things a lot easier as well. In a lot of cases, I could grab this on the x-axis, maybe by three or minus three in this case, and then I could actually just see that value down here in the bottom box, um, where maybe I can get a little bit more specific with it. And down here, rather than um, in the other mode, it might also be easier to just press like you know if I need to do some math like I want it to be halfway between the distance of another thing then I'm going to press um, let's say nine and then a slash for divide and then three and then it comes out as three meters again minus three is what I want in this scenario um, and that's how that works um, if I had something nearby just like with the other tool, I wanted to line them up exactly. Then I would be grabbing on the X axis and making sure that my snapping is set to vertex. Um, and then and then we can choose how that's going to snap. By default, this, this is a thin plane, so it's going to be fine. So if I go snap X and hold control, then that's going to align things completely. Um, and if there was another situation here where I had a whole, I wanted to align this whole block here and I wanted to get it in line, well, it's not really going to work for me. So if I grab that on the X, well, that's not working. Sometimes it could be easier to drag it past that point and then drag it on the X and it will do the closest one. So now it's in line again. Um, but really, if you want to be accurate about it, you're going to want to be in vertex mode or something like that so that that one's active. I'm going to turn this off now. So this front part is active, and then I'm going to want to change my snap width from closest to active. And now it's going to snap that regardless of where it's at. So that's going to, that's just how that works. Um, and you can do that with all the different options here. Um, so that's pretty good. 
uh, while I'm on the subject of just aligning objects, uh, this actually came up the other day. Um, if this object's rotated randomly, and then I add another object, then there's actually this tool, another add-on. It's already pre-installed. But if I type in align, then we've got our align tools, and that is in the sidebar item tab. I'm sure we've got here, item tab, sidebar, and align tools. Um, so if I select this object and I select that object, then actually I can press um, align. It's going to fully align that. So if I actually just scale that on the Y a little bit. And so just we can see what's happening here. If I, if I align that like that, then it's going to align it. Or if I had them selected the other way around, then it's going to align it like that. Um, and then we can get more granular with that where we just want to align the rotation. Or we just want to align the location and scale, which I haven't done. Um, but there you go, that's how that tool works and it's pretty useful. Um, there's another add-on called like the three point snap or whatever that looks really good. Um, I don't have it myself, so I can't cover it, but you can Google that. And I think that it's like the three point select align and that looks pretty good as well. Um, I just never, need, never needed it in my experience. Um, and I think that's a lot of stuff covered. Um, I'm just going to have a little look now. Well, and all of these rules that I've gone over, they apply to every tool in Blender. Like the whole thing is universal. So whereas I haven't really gone over much rotational snapping stuff or rotational accuracy, um, say if I did uh, just extrude this up a little bit and then just uh, let's see, Alt M now, I used to just press Y, but it's Alt M to separate that. Um, and let's say my cursor is over here as well. We can use that cursor to, uh, to rotate things, and that's going to be really good for some rotational, uh, rotational things. So if I just move this down for now, actually just move it in line with that. And when I'm rotating this now, it's actually rotating from that 3D cursor. So I use the full stop uh, or the period button to change the, the rotation point of this. So to be accurate with this, if I wanted to rotate from the active, which again, we just talked about active and I, had, I do in previous videos as well, then um, if I just want to rotate from the active, then the full stop button is going to work as active element and we can rotate on the X or Y in 90 just by typing that in by 90 degrees and that's accurate but in this case if I rotate from the 3D cursor and I rotate this on the and actually I just press Alt D uh, or just uh, in this case uh, in this case shift B because we're in edit mode um, and then I press R and then I press Y and I can start rotating that and actually I can just press shift R to re repeat that action um, and then in this case we know that they're all accurately spaced um, but as I was just explaining if I actually separate this object and I do the exact same thing but I press alt D in object mode and I rotate that by the Y And do that again then actually I can still continue to model all of them at once because I've used alt D where they're all linked together it's not strictly to do with being accurate in modeling but it's uh, it's uh, a pretty good thing to know um, and it does help things just stay uniform which I think is another way of just thinking about things being accurate. Um, and I think that's pretty much everything that I want to mention. There's probably plenty more that I could go over, um, but for right now that covers a lot of stuff. Uh, so do check out those other videos, let me know what else you want to see. 
and I'll catch you in the next one.